In my previous message, we were looking at Jesus' temptations in the wilderness, where he was tempted three times. And we noted that Satan was quoting the scriptures, which shows us that the enemy that we are dealing with is not a foolish one. He knows the scriptures, and he knows the power of the scriptures. He knows that if he can side foot us from the scriptures, we are fixed, we are deceived. So the enemy uses the scriptures. That's why to outsmart this arch enemy of the church, we must be better on the scriptures. We must love the scriptures. We must respect the scriptures and treat them as the final authority or reference in the things of God. Because what is happening today, if you're paying attention, people are becoming more obsessed with prophetic utterances, fresh prophecies at the expense of the scriptures. Which means the enemy is leading us into something that is going to cause us to lose the respect and the love for the scriptures as the sacred word of God. So we better be careful on that one. Because the Bible says scripture cannot be broken. Scripture is the final authority and the final reference. Without take away the scriptures, there is no Christian faith. So in the last message, we looked at this that three times when Jesus was tempted. To show that our Savior and Lord loved the scriptures, respected the scriptures, and stood on the scriptures. Jesus, in all those interpretations, he quoted the scriptures. And not only did he quote the scriptures, he started by affirming, before quoting the scriptures, he started by affirming that it is written. It is written, which is a message to us that the attitude of Jesus, he loved the scriptures, he respected the scriptures, and he put the scriptures to the highest esteem, which all of us must begin to do. Right now, what the church of Jesus in this world needs is to go back to the scriptures, to go back to the reverence of the scriptures. Because today, we have lost that attitude. May God help us. And every time we go back to the scriptures, there is great revival, a genuine revival, and a genuine restoration. So today, let's go back to that scripture we read in the past sermon. That's Matthew chapter 4, verses 1, all the way to 11. So, look at verse number 3, which says, And the tempter came and said to him, if you are the son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. Let's skip to verse number six. And he said to him, that's again, that is after he took him to the holy city and set him on the pinnacle of the temple. Verse number six. And he said to him, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down. For it is written, he will command his angels concerning you and on their hands they will bear you up. Lest you strike your foot against a stone. And finally, verse number 9. And he said to him, All these I will give you, I'll give you, if you fall down and worship me. Now, let's look at this. Because there is a repetition of a statement here, which the devil used. And that statement is what we see on verse number 3, as well as on verse number 6, whereby the devil said, If you are the Son of God. That's where the enemy started from. So I always say that a repetition of statements must attract your attention because a repeated statement reveals the dominant thought of the one who is speaking. So we see the devil here is repeating the same preamble, the same starting point to say, if you are the son of God. And again on verse number six, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down for it is written this and that. And finally, he brings in the temptation of the kingdoms of the world. Which, in other words, shows us that the devil knew that Jesus had come with the kingdom of God. But he repeats to say, if you are the son of God. Let us scrutinize that. What Now, if you look at the context by going back to the previous chapter, where was Jesus? Where did Jesus come from? The answer is that Jesus came from the baptism at the river Jordan, where John the Baptist baptized him. And when John baptized him, Something divine happened. Something huge happened because the Holy Spirit descended upon Jesus in the form of a dove. And at the same time, the voice of the Father from heaven was heard to say, this is my beloved son. This is my beloved. That was God speaking. This is my beloved son. That's what provoked the devil. The moment God pronounced to say, this is my son, my beloved son, the devil was provoked, was not an only at peace. That's why I think he followed Jesus into the wilderness with all these temptations. And look at how he presents the temptations to say, if you are the son of God. You know what that means? If somebody says, if you are the son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. Anyone who says that, he's trying to say that you are not 
the Son of God until you prove to me. You are not the Son of God until you prove to me by commanding these stones to become loaves of bread. You know, that's what provoked the devil to follow Jesus with these temptations. Because the Father pronounced on him that this is my Son. If anybody doubts that Jesus is the Son of God, here is the testimony. Because if Jesus wasn't the Son of God, the devil wouldn't have followed him into the wilderness and challenged him to say, if you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. By the way, this was a trick. The devil wanted to trick Jesus. Why? Because Jesus was at the end of 40 days of fasting. He was so hungry. It was the easiest way to bring food. Because that, those stones, if they had become bread, that bread was going to be Jesus' food. In other words, the devil was trying to tempt Jesus by offering him a shortcut to finding food. Now, here was the danger, or here is the danger. If Jesus had been tempted to say, okay, I'm going to turn the stones into bread and I'll eat, and my fasting is over. Jesus was going to have committed a mistake of distrusting God. Because if the enemy says, if you are the son of God, turn stones into bread, he is saying, you are not the son of God until you prove to me. In other words, the devil was sowing doubt in Jesus. To doubt the voice of the father. Because the voice of the father, which came when he was baptized by, by, by John the Baptist, that was his evidence. The father is the truth. When he said, this is my son, that was enough. There was no need to turn stones into bread in order to prove that he's the son of God. Because the voice of the father was enough. So that's why Jesus, his answer was, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. And one of those words that proceeded from the mouth of God was the voice of God, which came from heaven when Jesus was baptized to say, this is my son. So if you are the son of God, throw yourself down from here. You know, you must avoid the temptation to prove to people. That's the other lesson from here, especially to fellow ministers. Here was an opportunity for Jesus to perform a miracle. But the motive was wrong. So listen to me, my fellow pastor, bishops, apostles, prophets. Beware of the temptation to perform certain miracles in order to prove a point to people. Or to prove a point to fellow ministers. Because that motive does not come from God. And it does not glorify God. So when the devil said, if you are the son of God, prove to me by turning stones into bread. Jesus rejected that kind of motive for performing a miracle. Because that was going to be a wrong motive, an ungodly motive, as well as it was going to be something that smart of doubting the wave that came from heaven to say, this is my son. Stay blessed. And please, subscribe, follow, and recommend this work, this page to your friends.